privileged to be here today. What he didn't tell you is the reason why I'm here is because I'm seeing more of you in court. Um, some of what I'm going to talk with you all about today, you all may be familiar with, and it may involve some of you. Uh, it's all open record. It's all in an open courtroom, and I certainly don't mean to embarrass anybody. I've had several people that have talked to me about this presentation after the fact uh, who were offended by some of the things that I said, and quite frankly, I hope that some of you all are offended by what I have to say. Um, I started to see a problem with 15, 16-year-old kids coming into my courtroom seeking protective orders for a number of reasons, and that's why I'm here. One thing to get clear, first of all, is that <clears throat> we use the word bullying in school. In the court of law, it's called harassment, and it's a crime. So as we use those words, they pretty much mean the same thing, bullying, harassment. As I use them here, uh, they apply to protective orders, and I'll talk a little bit about how you get a protective order and why I'm seeing more protective orders uh, with teenage kids that go to high school. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about that, but it's harassment and bullying. In popular culture, we have a lot of examples of bullies. Let's see if we get this thing. There we go. You all are familiar with some of these, some of these people. Nelson, favorite, kind of a likable bully because he's a cartoon, not you know, like a cartoon, right? Um, I was going to put Biff from Back to the Future, but my wife told me you all wouldn't get that reference, so I went with this. Uh, you all know who that guy is, I think. And then my favorite, which will will date me. Uh, Johnny and the Cobra Kai, if you haven't watched The Karate Kid, go rent it today. Go to Redbox, see if it's there. Netflix, whatever, you've got to see Karate Kid. The interesting thing about all these bullies that we see, they have friends, they have people that were with them, but when we watch these movies, when we watch these shows, with the exception of Nelson, we don't like these people. Uh, we see what they do, we see what they stand for, we see the types of uh, acts of unkindness, how cruel and mean they can be. Quite frankly, we, just, we can't stand them in the movie. We want them to fail. We know uh, bullies exist in reality. It's not just in the movies. And the more personal side of this are the incidents where someone was bullied to the point where they felt like they had to take their own life. They committed suicide. In the state of Massachusetts, in the past year, they charged nine children with bullying a young girl who committed suicide. <clears throat> Sadder story, in the state of Illinois, a 10-year-old girl was found uh, hanging in her closet where she killed herself because of bullying. This happened just a few months ago, um, back in November 2011. Her sister found her. her. Parents believed that she'd been bullied. The interesting thing about this case, the event occurred about 45 miles away from a bigger city. Anybody know how far away we are from Tulsa? about 45 miles from a bigger city. This girl was killed in a community very similar to ours. And what happened, the reason why I'm here today is because one day in court, uh, after hearing a case between a 15 and 16 year old girl fighting against one another and the bullying and harassment and kind of the group bullying, um, kind of felt like something bad was about to happen in our community. And lo and behold, uh, a few months later, I'm here speaking to your school, speaking to the high school and the middle schools because I, I truly believe that if this doesn't stop, we're going to have an incident that's happened in Illinois or Massachusetts in those communities similar to what you see up here. It's real. It's happening. It's happening in our community. So why am I here? I handled what's called the protect order docket. The protect order docket is a docket where people come to court claiming that they have been harassed, uh, uh, assaulted, uh, that their life has been disturbed by the acts of somebody else. <clears throat> We've seen a rise in protective orders from high school students, as I told you. I think over about a three-month period, uh, we had about 11 to 12 protective order cases, all from high school. And really, truthfully, mostly 15, 16-year-old kids. Uh, that's been the bulk of, of the high school kids that I've been seeing, you all. And so I say that, that I see these things. Some of the people that are in this room maybe some of the people that are involved. I don't want to embarrass anybody. That's not what my point is. I want for the people who are being harassed and bullied to understand that they do have rights. Uh, I should have done this before, uh, but Kristen and Sylvia are here from FCC. They are advocates for people who need protective orders. Uh, they work for Family Care Crisis, Family Crisis Counseling Center here in Bartlesville. And they are available to help somebody who has a need for a protective order. 
who feels like they've been harassed or assaulted to the point where they need protection. Okay? If you're one of the people that's causing that problem, uh, maybe that's really where I hope somebody feels embarrassed and ashamed because that's, this is where we are today that, that people are having to come into court to get these things. What I've seen in court from kids your age, and I'm going to show you some examples, are some of the most vicious attacks at other people. They're racist, they are offensive, they're vulgar. Uh, there are so many different ways to describe the things that we have seen from kids your age talking to other children. <clears throat> it's usually done on Facebook or in texts, uh, through the social media. That's where we're seeing a lot of these things. That's where we're seeing a lot of the evidence. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the Facebook phenomenon and why it, it's taking off. I think just about everybody's on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Uh, everybody we know is on Facebook. All right. So it is something that we're dealing with. And then, really, the reason why I'm here because I just I'm upset about it. I'm very disturbed by what I'm seeing. Girls, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm seeing mostly cases with you all. Uh, 15, 16 year old girls fighting with each other, uh, and it's group fighting. It's not. It's not just uh, two girls fighting. Usually, it's a group of girls that are harassing somebody. Let me tell you just a couple of examples of what I've seen. Uh, one of the cases was a uh, young 15 year old girl harassing on Facebook saying horrible things, I'm going to come get you, you're no good this, you're no good that, you better watch your back, that sort of thing. All on Facebook and usually with friends chiming in saying, yeah, go do it. Well, one example, a uh, young girl was saying all these things to another young girl, who I'll call the victim in this case. The victim was receiving Facebook messages and not just even direct Facebook messages, but just putting a Facebook message on your own wall saying, this girl better look out, uh, uh, this girl, I'm going to do this to her, she's a horrible human being, whatever. You don't have to directly message somebody to have a protective order. Just posting something like that for everybody to see is cause for a protective order, it's cause for harassment. It's just like if you bought a billboard on the side of the road and put that person's name up there 24-7, uh, defaming that person, saying horrible things about them. Facebook just allows you to have that billboard in a different format. But this girl was putting all these things up there, and then all of a sudden somebody chimed in. She started saying, yeah, you need to go uh, uh, fix that girl, you need to go mess with her, beat her up, and I'll drive you to do it. It was the girl's mother who was telling her that on Facebook. And it took me all of about two seconds to decide, and Kristen remembers that, I don't think, even think I heard any testimony except from the mother uh, in that case, and granted the protective order. So <clears throat> the things that we are seeing are things that are easily identified things that we can easily pull up off the internet, even if you delete them. What I'm going to show you here in a minute, some of the actual Facebook posts were deleted. But guess what? Once you put it on the internet, it's out there. Somebody's going to be able to find it. It may be stored on an IP somewhere, uh, uh, stored in some data center, I don't know. But it's, it's, it's accessible. You can find it. So just because you delete something doesn't mean it's off forever. And just because you put something on Facebook, uh, doesn't mean that no one sees it, or if you do delete it, no one else will see it later down the road. They see it, it can be printed off, and it's there forever. And there's your evidence against you for the uh, protect uh, form. Alright, so I told you, saying the nasty things. Also, breakups. This is where it's getting interesting for kids your age. I'm sorry, I don't mean to call you kids, young men, young women. Um, <clears throat> you all are old enough not to be children and kids, but I may use that word, so I apologize. The breakup. Seen a lot of protective orders with a young girl who broke up with a boy or vice versa, and typically the boy has been following, calling, texting all hours of the night, knocking on the door, leaving messages on the car, uh, you name it. Not just that, I had one recently where the young man started beating up any boy that was talking to this girl. And I've seen the video of those fights. And this is where I, I one thing I do want to kind of step away from my program to talk about. I've seen the videos of kids your age fighting that may have involved people in this room. And I've seen you stand by and do nothing. I've seen people stand by and cheer on those fights and applaud what's going on, encourage the fighting. And that's got to stop. Somebody's got to have the courage to step in and stop what's going on, stop some of this madness. It's not just about seeing a neat thing happen. All right? It's not about seeing a UFC match in the middle of Barbellsville High School middle of the street. Somebody needs to have the courage to stop it. I'm seeing a lot of that, and those things come to my courtroom. And this young man who was harassing this girl, who was a former breakup, a former girlfriend, um, he was picking on those boys who she talked to. 
Guys, I don't care who the girl is, or whether or not you were in love, or thought you were in love, or how long you dated, you don't own that girl. If she leaves, she doesn't want you anymore, you have to let it go. And I know it's hard. But these are the things that I'm seeing in court. Those girls that may be harassed, and harassed by you harassing guys that they talk to, that's intimidating to them. That scares them. It shows an imbalance on your part. That you're not stable. And they're scared, and they come and get a protective order over situations like that. But apart from all that, it can be a crime as well. And we'll talk about that a little more. Too. All right, so as I mentioned, you're going to have the in-person harassment in the hallway, uh, waiting by the car, leaving a note on the car for somebody you don't like. Um, Facebook, you'll be sending messages, posting messages. And I want to repeat this again. It doesn't have to be a direct message to that person that gets you a protective order that causes harassment. Putting it out there for the world to see and for all your friends to talk about openly uh, is a problem. You don't have to like everybody. Not everybody has to like you. Okay, That's not a requirement. We're 450 kids here. Not everybody has to like each other. But it doesn't mean that gives you the right to go out into the world and put things for the public to see about how much you don't like that person. That's not appropriate either. It can't constitute harassment, which would be a crime and worthy of a protective order. Some people thought they'd been smart using fake text, face, fake Facebook posts, things like that, making a fake Facebook profile. Uh, one of the stories I didn't have up here was a young girl who committed suicide because a mother created a false Facebook persona and harassed this girl and she ended up killing herself uh, and that mother was charged. But people think that because they may do this through a, uh, somebody else's Facebook or through a third person that that somehow gets them out of responsibility for the protective order or for the crime. Not so. And a lot of the things we see, you see a pattern of harassment, the notes being left, the, the in-person insults that are flying down the hallway, uh, a few texts saying you're a bad person, the Facebook posts, and then all of a sudden we see some random text number showing up on their phone saying uh, you're a horrible human being, better watch your back, etc. In different words than that, obviously. <clears throat> when I look at the totality of the evidence in a case and everything that comes into court, and I see a pattern of harassment, and I see a fake text come out of nowhere making specific threats. I consider that uh, evidence to be considered against you and granting a protective order against you. So don't think you're going to outsmart anything by, by doing that. There is circumstantial evidence, and that would be an example of circumstantial evidence. Real Facebook posts that we've used in our cases. I want to make this clear again because some people were offended uh, when I showed some things or talked about.